Okay, so we are hoping that I don't have to redo the first 15 minutes of that. Um, audio. Yes, yes, yes. See, I can feel. I'm pretty sure it's going to be okay. I'm pretty sure because I can kind of feel like there's just like this, 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 this uh, little bit of audio feedback I get when um, it's when like things are working. Um, my suspicion is, is that there's maybe a few minutes that didn't work somehow. But hopefully Zoom is really good. And right when my, the microphone wasn't working, it picked up on it and told me the message and didn't make me waste time. But we will see. So that one is, all right, you know, it's going to upload quick because there's only 15 minutes. So I'll know in about five. But anyways, um, let's get back to where we were. And if I have to kind of go back and kind of repeat what I said, which is the end of the world, it happens, um, you know, it is what it is. And, and I, I was, I, I was, I'd probably be able to do it in, in, in honestly, like less time because it's like, uh, you know, it, 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 uh, it, it all makes sense to me now. I made a lot of connections already, but anyways, okay. So I explained that, um, you know, you have this, this Scorpio energy on the ascendant and that, you know, the sun is in that, that Leo 10th house you know, on the mid heaven. Um, but then you have Ceres, right? So this is actually really nice for you to have such a, a warm planet, right? Or asteroid, excuse me, like, like Ceres so close to your, um, your sun at, tw at the killer be killed, <laughs> um, position. So yeah. One quick second. Okay, so anyways, 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 um, so yeah, I, I was going into, oh, I'm still like, I'm not nervous, but I'm, I'm just like, okay, it's 36%. I really want to know because like a lot of like what I talk about, what I would talk about, um, you know, let's 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 say like uh, I a lot of what I would talk about would you know be very related to you know what I said before. <sighs> um, should just wait. Hmm. No, because I can always I can always tie everything back in. Yeah. Well, basically, okay, yeah. So, so, so the beauty of, of everything is that you know you you're, 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 you have the Scorpio rising, um, as I said, and the Leo Sun. So it's like this this back and forth between, you know, the light and the dark. You know, between coming off as very, um, you know, very mysterious and 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 kind of uh, people not being able to read you, someone who, who very powerful, you know, the person who walks in the room, people kind of notice them. They really analyze and, and see everything. Scorpio rising is old souls, you know, they're, they're old souls nearly always. Um, and um, then, you know, like the rest of your charts is very, very fun. 
you know, which is very, very fun. And um, one second. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Maybe I will just. this all right thank god uh i just let it let it play all right i let it i i i, I let it um download everything safe so good feeling okay so because i was i was really on a roll there and it would have been a shame to have lost that huge shame um so anyways so I'll, yeah i'll 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 uh, either yeah, um. Basically, so so with with the eighth house, right? Like with the energy, I think like where 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 I left well, where I left that one where it said like Mike isn't working. I was talking about like kind of like outgrowing people and and going through lots of like emotional, uh, you know, emotional kind of like ego deaths and and really like this big need to kind of surrender. Um, and. You know, it's just so true. Um, it's just so true. And interestingly, so there's no Pluto. At, uh, yeah, Pluto opposite Mars. Why isn't it sure that my thing? That's interesting. Um, so I have to remember that. Um, but yeah, so so there is this element, right? This this kind of split between the Leo kind of um very very gregarious side and the kind of darker scorpio energy but then the moon and gemini which is of course like i said the emotional need um is on one hand to be very communicative to be very social to, be, to network a lot this that and the third right all the gemini stuff but then there is it's 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 in the arena of life of of, of real depth you know, um, so, you know, it, it can, it can make someone who, you know, wants to really learn and talk a lot, but not about surface level BS about deep stuff and the Scorpio rising would accommodate that well. So, um, then the split isn't as difficult and it's between Leo and Scorpio, but you know, the Gemini moon kind of, um, you know, is a nice, uh, moderator in the middle where it's like the Gemini feeds the Leo, but the eighth house feeds the Scorpio. So yeah, um, someone who can make things happen in the physical and, and, you know, who can exist in this world, like, um, you know, who can, who can really um, still have the small talk, but really, really prefers um, the real deep, the depth, the deepness. There's such depth is the word, right? But you get the point. Um, so, aside that, um, let me just check one more thing. Nothing there, nothing there, nothing there. Yeah. So then, uh, okay, yeah, moon, square, mercury. You know, here we're talking about a... Um, a mix up when it comes to whether you should trust your emotions or your logic. And this is actually very common just in having a Gemini moon in itself and air moon and in, in, in general is that there can almost be like an on off switch when it comes to whether you want to like truly feel your emotions or not. Um, any air, moon, Libra, Aquarius, um, Gemini, they they can be a little bit, not that they're not emotional, but they can be a little bit removed from it. Um, so yeah, it, it it's it's important for for the 
for the Gemini Moon people to, um, especially like, well, I mean, you do have Scorpio rising, but you know, it's important to figure out ways to get in touch with the emotions. And Gemini, you know, it's all about writing. It's all about communication. So journaling is a really, really like like something to do with writing is an incredible outlet and um just just having friends you know um because your 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 mercury is in the 11th house so you will be someone who likes to have you know lots of constant stimulation through your friend groups and just groups in general um but it's really important that um you, know, you can like be someone who joins like a study group, have something you're interested in. Um, but you will be someone who likes to kind of like really be talkative within your um your social groups, and who who likes to really learn, you know, with other people and this, that, and the third. Um, then what else about Gemini moons? Moons most important in my in my book. Um. You know, Gemini Moon's just, uh, like, I always say that, like, you know, COVID would have been a very, very difficult time for for Gemini Moon in specific because of that that need to to communicate, you know, that, that need to kind of, like, uh, have their voice be heard and um, to have different avenues through which they can do that, different people. They like to be connected with their, you know, immediate environment. Um, and... You know what better way than like, like or not 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 what better way like like you know the like it just for for most Gemini moons I've talked to and I'm a Sag moon so it's the opposite sign but the same energy the opposite manifestation it's different but um yeah um of course like that's only one part of our chart right but it definitely for Gemini moons. They do like to be, you know, there, there's a, a, a great need for socializing and for having lots of friends, for communicating. Um, so it, it makes you wonder how the Scorpio rising kind of like, uh, like, yeah, I'm just very curious of, of how, how that, what that experience is like um, for you and, and meeting people. And um, if you get that feedback of like, wow, I, I didn't expect you to be you know, like this, because, yeah, Leo and Gemini is a beautiful combo. So bright, so creative. I must say, though, also, you know, like, I, like, um, no, really, really, I mean, Mercury square moon's difficult, but it's not like, you know, Saturn or Pluto square moon, or something like that, or opposite, opposite moon. So, yeah, like, the, the other thing about Gemini is that it can be, I just wrote my low, my high, low vibe Gemini post. Um, you know, it definitely can be, there's lots of like psychopathology linked to Gemini or Gemini moon in specific, um, or just like, like lots of Gemini placements. Um, overthinking is, is one of them. So because yours is in the eighth house and, and just being so scattered and yeah, over analyzing that kind of energy it's just very important to um it's very important to what's the word i'm looking for to to, to have like outlets you know i say this so much in my readings because i think that every human to some extent but some more than others you know, need a creative outlet you know something that they're their passion about that they they can do in their sleep like they just love doing and you know being someone with their son on the midheaven um you know it could be that you find you know, that you can have like career changes and and um you know go through different uh eras i guess you could you could call them But yeah, there's definitely some 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 potentials for 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 like anxiety, um, 
you know, it rules the hands to so like do, like things doing things with your hands, like guitar, video games. I don't know things like like that involve like uh like type like a lot of Gemini moons I talk to like they're like I'm they're like I'm really like really fast typers. Um. But yeah, there can be anxiety, and one of the best ways is to find something that involves the hands, the usage of the hands as an outlet. Um, you know, third house, Gemini also rules siblings, so um, it's important. Um, there could be, you know, some connection there, and you have lots of outer plants in the third house. So if you do have siblings, that could be uh, an important part of life. Um, where karma exists. I'm not saying if it's good or bad. I don't have any indications, but, um, you know, you could also not have siblings. Like, um, it's not so, so clear about that. But, yeah, in essence, um, it's interesting how they all kind of play together. Um, but yeah, the first warning thing sign I see is the overanalyzing, overthinking, too much uh, cognitive activity. You know, with Mercury in Virgo, which of course is a great sign of intelligence like you're for sure i'm gonna message you right now just to let you know let me let you know that we're doing uh this right now let's see if you message me first nope you know what i'm saying it happens where are you where are you where are you where are you where are you, where are you? Where are you? story game i'm doing I know exactly what your color of your profile. It's like greenish, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this is you. Okay, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to say doing yours now. Also going to have the last message sent be well, actually, actually, what am I doing? Although it doesn't, no, it actually doesn't matter. I'm going to tell you what happened, too. Send you the link. Also, one little thing happened. Um, basically, like, I was 50 minutes in. I was really, like, on a roll. And then Zoom just said, your microphone's not working properly. And I was, like, kind of, like, wait. Did they did like 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 I because I did check before I did show that there was seed duck, but basically what I decided to do was to to um stop the recording and have the first fifteen minutes be like just I just wanted to make sure you know that like it it it, it, it that um I mean I didn't know like like I didn't want to like continue doing a reading where um where the first fifteen minutes were super super important weren't even heard. So I have it in, it's going to be in two parts. Um, and so I can figure out a way to, 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 to connect them together. Um, but yeah, uh, thank God that it was recorded and, and uh, you know, everything was like, was good. So nothing, nothing was lost. So yeah. And I'm actually like literally still recording as I'm saying these messages, but okay. Back to the reading now. And also make sure that when we're done talking tonight or like like last uh, comment you leave, 
or message Lee that says story game, just to remember. Okay. And one quick second, sorry. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, Grant. I accidentally opened the message. I, like, my fingers scrolled. Okay. Um good. Good, 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 good. Okay. So yeah, like overanalyzing, definitely. Um, but you know, when you can get down to it down to it and you know, your Murphy is very close to the nebula, so that's like very much about truth seeking. Your eighth house moon is about finding truth as well. Jupiter ninth house, you know, definitely an expansive worldview. Um, so yeah, variety of energy in your big three, um, and then you have earth in your Mars. So you have all four elements. Um, if you have like a different element with your sun ascendant, your big three, and then Mars, I consider that to be the, the best balance because I consider me, why are you looking at me like that? Mika. Oh my god. Um, she's so Scorpio. She looks at me like she wants to murder me, but then she just wants love. Um give me a kiss, Mika. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're a good girl. You're that's girl. Well, you and me. Okay, so yeah. Um okay, so I'll I'll go back around. But yeah, the nebula is all about a truth seeking. You won't find any information about it because this is like ancient um Babylonian information, but um yeah, your Mercury is close to it in, in, in Virgo, so you 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 know, there's definitely indicators of someone who 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 has a very large um you know whose worldview is very expansive and who always wants to expand the worldview. Um you know, even having Alice in in, in you know conjunct Virgo in the ninth or in conjunct Chiron in, in Cancer in the ninth. Um, you know, with Jupiter there too, it's like you can really be like a healer through your philosophies, um, which is really nice, and really like have this ability to expand in a very like sweet, uh, way, like kind of Cancerian, like kind of smooth, like really like also psychic too. Um, like like have this really like wide perspective on life. Um intellect that you know can also help you in getting past what our generation 1990 born people have is this chiron um and jupiter both in in cancer right so um you know issues with the family of origin maybe not you know kind of fitting um their kind of definition of what they consider to be correct like in terms of like if it's religion or it's general worldview is common or just feeling like your, your views aren't accepted. Like that's totally how I feel. Um, you know, like, you know, that I can't like, besides like, and not like astrology or anything, but just like, for example, on like, if like I started talking about like 
you know, my my views of what's happening in the world geopolitically, right? It would just be met. It's just like complete opposition. So that's like an example, right? But then like the astrology thing is not like at least with my mom. My dad, my brother respect it, but they're not like into it. But they're not like against it. They're more neutral and happy that I can, you know, they do something I love, I'd say. Um so yeah. Um Mars and Taurus in the seventh conjunct best though. Um, you know, you definitely your 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 relationship, love life is definitely it's you know, you, you you have to work hard, you know? Like, you are a worker in your relationships. Um, and take, but also a fighter. Um, you know, Mars in the seventh. It's it's far from the descendant, but, you know, it's definitely in the seventh. Um, so it can create lots of disputes. And Mars squares your sun. So, um, you know, you definitely do have to watch out for you know, domestic violence because I, I talked about like the killer or to be killed energy. So having that, you know, definitely watching out for that. And, you know, eighth house uh, can be very, very dark too with the moon there. So it's very important that you lean on, you know, on women, on, on powerful women teachers, not just like women, like, like teachers who can, who can, you know, like I could be like considered that because like I'm you know very integrated with that. But like moon, like like emotional healers, you know, and there'll be lots of faith that will get you the high at Gemini energy, which is that curiosity that but that's not scattered. I read a whole article about it. I'm not gonna like repeat everything about that. Um, like you can, uh, if you haven't read that article, which I'm pretty sure you have. Um, you know that has a lot in there, but. Um, it's it's just an indication that you're really meant to to live in the high high end of that of that 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 Gemini, which is you know no go no not about gossiping, not about kind of like turning emotions off, and it's about yeah connecting, you know connections and um and you know really being a dynamic, creative, like just inspirational person who is like almost like the link between other people and, 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 and ideas and, and someone who goes out in the world, but who's always has that child's eye, um, you know, like, like, like not being, you know, always like being willing to kind of be wrong, I guess. And, and, uh, kind of switch up your worldview if need be. So that is important. Now, Mars and Taurus can be quite stubborn. Um, it's it's you know lots of very successful people have it. Um, it makes no hard aspects. It trines actually Saturn, which is uh you know very good for for in your case um being able to keep long term relationships. Um. And really wanting stability within the relationships as your descendants in, in, in Taurus. Um, you know, you don't want to waste waste your time and energy and things that are not like worth it. Um and you know, having the, the Venus and Leo makes one, you know, really, really need a certain level of attention. But they want to be proud of their partner as well. And your your south nodes can junk Venus. One word, karmic gifts, karmic gifts, um, and lots of, of good, good, good karma coming in this lifetime, especially when it comes to like relationships. Now, where's my psychic crystal? Here it is. It's close, it was close enough to me to where I, I felt, I felt it give me a little something, a little tingle. But um, that may have not sounded so on point, but that's because um, 
there's just things you have to work through. But like at the end of the day, Mars trines, you know, Mars in the seventh, um, and Taurus. It can. It's just like you know, it can be. It can be stubborn in relationships. Um, like my way or the highway, and then combative. But ultimately, um, Mars and Taurus to me represents someone who has an an energy where you know where you can you can really learn a lot and and work and and have like powerful 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 um kind of like um what's the word I'm thinking of partnerships whether it's business and you know whatever it may, it might be um. Also, it can create lots of open enemies, though. That's another another thing. So you gotta watch out for that. Um, and that goes back to like the high and low vibe Gemini, right? Um, and high and low vibe Leo, which I'm gonna write the Leo one soon. I just haven't wanted to write for a few days. But yeah, with Leo, it's it's like um, authentic self expression you know, really doing things to make other people happy or, or being self-serving. And because your South node is there, conjunct Venus, you know, you, you have been someone who has been a very good Leo in past lives. Um, you, yeah, you haven't really been that way um, so much, right? But there has been lots of been there, done that when it comes to being the center of attention and, having lots of admiration sent your way and um, the ego in general. Right. So it's really important. That you, you might feel like, and I have the same place from obviously being more in the same year, like there might, you might feel kind of blocked when it comes to like, if you have like, like, like some people with that, they enter this life um, with kind of almost like it's, it's like almost like this, like karmic entitlement, like, you know, they, like where they just feel, like you know past lives of, of being in high positions like they they can kind of almost sometimes sometimes feel like you know they deserve things right um or deserve fame or deserve thanks with you where's your ball you give me that look you know, like fetch like that so um yeah like the, the key with the, the north node aquarius is moving from the I to the we and doing things for, for the human humanitarian good of society as opposed to, you know, just for your personal good. Um, now, I, I, I think Vesta and Mars together would make one yeah, like really like willing to like work hard at their relationships, um, uh, like within their or within their relationships. Um and I think that yeah, there's there's just this combination um of um like just it, also just like outside, just like being a really, really, really good worker like because your career i mean you have you're your son conjunct the freaking midheaven like come on like so you know you are really like you're and you're you know your south node's there so there's there is lots of been there done that um so there's an, uh, an interesting mix where you're really meant to shine on like the big picture the like in, like in the world like one of the best placements but it's it's, it's 12 degrees in midheaven so it's not like smack on it but it's meant to, to be in a way that, that gives back. Um, you know, it's really important for, for, you, for you to give back through, through what you do. But another in really interesting thing is when you have South Node conjunct Venus, it's <coughs> just, <coughs> excuse me, a thousand percent sure that, you know, you're, relationships are very 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 karmic and very faded and you know not not there's no square so it's not necessarily a bad thing it's just that they'll be very faded same goes for any artistic abilities you might have
Um, you know, you'll bring lots of talents in this lifetime. It's in Leo, which is about creativity. But I was, I think I, I didn't really talk about so much how you have series, you know, which is like an asteroid, like you could think of it like a second moon sign, right? But not as important. Not, not, it's like about nurturance, right? It's very Virgo cancer energy. And having it conjunct your son in Leo, I think gives you like a, it really gives you like a warmth, like a very, very warm energy. Um, even with the Scorpio rising. So I think that helps out. But I think the Scorpio rising definitely helps repel some of like the lower vibe people that you definitely don't want around you. Um, which is obviously very good. Um, and Hmm. Let's see here. So, yeah, definitely can be like a philosophical type of healer. Um, and also an emotional, you know, someone who heals, heals people's emotions or emotionally. Um, you want to shine in your career but in a way that goes back that's kind of what I'm getting at and if you go towards like those e kind of like egoic like things that serve the ego you know like in terms of career career slash overall dharma it's not just career you that's when you kind of will will meet not the kill or be killed but like some of like the 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 22 capricorn kind of like um holdbacks you know things that hold you back roadblocks and there can be lots of frustration you know especially like i feel you at the south node in, in leo frustration of especially when young of like i should be a fan you know i should be like, like, why am I not famous? You know, why am I not? Um, like, why them? Why not me? And you most for sure have like lots of talents, innate talents. Yeah, it's all about like channeling those into ways that that give back. Um, and the chart being ruled by you know by Pluto in the first is interesting too. Um. As you know, having your, your chart ruler in the first house just like adds more power to that sign of Scorpio, that energy of Pluto, that you know, that theme of death, rebirth, transformation, and how you know, you, you'd have a very, like, very mag, like I said, very, very, very magnanimous, powerful presence. Um, more on that. So yeah, there's this deep, like, kind of soul evolutionary impulse towards uh independence, which, you know, in all likelihood was held back in past lives. The Pluto the first, and then my camera just went off. So yeah, it was held back. Okay. Held back in past lives. Um go back to that. Okay, yeah. Um and it's usually felt instinctively. Um and it, it speaks of this 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 conflict between the soul and the ego. Right? The so Leo and the Scorpio. So, and the whole idea is, you know, it was a very important evolutionary astrology. So the purpose from an evolutionary standpoint is to to truly search for the self, the authentic self, which Leo, that's all about authentic self-expression. You know, doing it for your own gain as opposed to 
like doing it for the for, for, for the growth as opposed to for the views, for example. So for the you know, to really fulfill one's true individual potential. Everyone's unique. Finding your uniqueness, right? Um so yeah, it's like this this balance between like the 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 party that wants that that kind of novelty and instinctual kind of ex like kind of like this yeah this novelty and this um this these new experiences these new like kind of like bodily experiences like instinctual bodily experiences right but then there's the other part that wants this deep inner psychological like uh, insight that leads you to the meaning of life um there can also be lots of inner fear of imprisonment in relationships if things get like too clingy and there can also be like this uh repressed rage against the self or against the other now for pluto which is you know it's all about like digging deep in the underworld and through that that deep dive that's where you find the gold the metaphor of gold right it's the shadow work um you look at the polarity point aka the opposite sign and that's you know opposite house seventh house three marses right and they, they actually oppose each other but um it's all about yeah reaching out in relationships um and having good communication in them really really understand that, like what 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 the other person wants and under and really explaining you know that you're here like just they, they need to know that you have a very special purpose here Pluto first house people they, they're not here to fuck around they're here to really like like learn who they truly fucking are right on a deep level it's not always pretty eighth house moon as well so um yeah lots of um potential for like like repetitive relationship cycles um but there's an intimacy paradox right uh between like repulsion um being like repelled by some people and and super drawn to others right but it really comes down to choosing the right partner right really comes down to that choosing the right partner so what does that mean well um one, it means someone who, you know, is is can can kind of match your your curiosity, um, just for life in general. But two, you know, someone who can be this solid rock, as I like to call it, right? This solid, consistent person. Um, you know who they're going to be day after day, and with Venus and Leo, you know that 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 brings up the the whole kind of desire to be admired. Um, you know, the desire to have fun. Lots of fun is needed as a Leo. You know, an inner child. Like you need to be ex able to express your kind of like to completely like let loose you know and have fun like you need you cannot be the boring person like they, there can be parts of them that are boring in a set not boring but like like consistent right but they need to really like be like probably funny you, you know leo venus people tend to really care about physical attractiveness i do too don't worry <laughs> like we we'll always be like you know, like, uh, like I mean, I I admit it. I care. It's not like it's a, it's a huge like, it's not. It's a even you know determinant factor. It's more of like a prerequisite. You know, um. I mean, I think most people would 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 want to be with someone that they're attracted to, which is a subjective thing, right? Especially for a fucking woman. Oh my god. I don't know if anyone's ever done a study. This is completely off subject, but like, like there's a pretty somewhat uh, i'd say a somewhat but still very still subjective but like way more of a of a common consensus of you know what women men find attractive although my tastes are way different than 
common because I'm all fucking Mr. Venus and Mars and Aquarius, but it's just always how it's been. But for women, it's like all over the map. Which is, you know, I, I, I'd be interested to see like a study where they took like a thousand women. I think it's it, cause, because women are way more emotional and way more spiritually advanced than men. So they, um, you know, they can find traits, attractive, like intelligence. Um, well, men, a lot of men are just barbaric, barbaric, just cavemen. Um, joking, obviously, but not really for some some men in today's world. Um, so yeah. Um, I don't know. If I'm, yeah. Okay. So besides that, um, not many big aspects here. Venus and Jupiter together. That's one of the best in all astrology. Just you know, luck and love, luck and money. Um, it makes you know. It's really, really good for your career. Um, and, uh, you know, even, you know, that means that Jupiter is, is, is only seven degrees from the south, no different sign, but still, you know, Ju uh, Jupiter and Venus, the two luckiest signs conjunct your south node, which is your past life, means you have very good karma that you've come in this life with. But let's get back to that and then we'll get, we'll get more into love stuff. I want to like add asteroids to that. So I told you, so, so yeah, you're really, Try like you've been, been so okay. So there, there is a lot of been there, done that with respect to like the um, um, what you would call it, like like just like being really really good in your career and, and just killing you in that area of life, um, being the star, having the recognition, public recognition, all that. So that that it it can almost feel like I don't know. Like in 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 it's still alive in your chart, right? But like the the North Node, right, is on the IC in Aquarius, so it's really pointing to like Cancer Aquarius, which is like on one end, you know, I already I already said moving away from from kind of like more egoic kind of like uh, desires and uh, pursuits to ones that are more um, you know for the good of the people um, and humanity, but also it's about developing the, uh, the feminine nature in yourself and, and figuring out the balance. There's been an imbalance between like the, the Capricorn cancer axis of home, home life and, 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 and work kind of like, like Dharma, like outer life, inner and outer life also, you know, like, like emotional inner. So that's why, like, I think a big part of your karma is about, um, kind of sifting through, your shadow and just finding, finding, finding like insights in that, you know, things like astrology, like, um, therapy, whatever kind of healing. It's very good. Um, I should just switch to my, off my camera. So yeah, basically, um, then, you know, all, all the adders, you know, in the third, um, could be some 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 interesting energy you have a follow-up so we can talk about that if there's any with siblings uh you know you could have had some some issues um early on communicating like maybe shy early on in childhood like fear of expressing yourself with the saturn there but then you slowly like especially now gradually build up that skill um like and can come from that over analysis of the, of the 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 Mercury, but you know your Mercury has some nice some nice aspects, right? And it try it try in Saturn, which is like a really good indication of of intelligence. Saturn is memory, um, Mercury is your cognitive energy, and it's already in the exalt uh dignity position, right? Which is like where Mercury works best. Um. So. Yeah. Um, and it really also gives lots of organization and groundedness to the mind. So maybe it, it, it could actually push away some of that, that nervousness. Um, gifted healer as well. And um, yeah, just someone who, who's very quick to grasp new ideas. So there's a very strong Mercury, very smart person. 
and a uh, really good communicator, someone who loves to, to just discuss ideas of all sorts, um, especially the Gemini moon, which is another great sign of intelligence too, right? Um, like, you know, because that, that need for that mental stimulation, that curiosity, like that, that, that social butterfly energy, but also just like uh, intellectual, very intellectual, and a chatterbox, <laughs> typically. Um, but then the Scorpio rising can kind of like mm, shut that down a little bit, right? Um, so, yeah, just having Sirius on your son can make you just like a natural nurturer, natural healer, whether that's your career or not. Anyways, I was talking about, um, yeah, so then Neptune in the third. So that's like writing for you. I, I just think that like that'd be a very powerful avenue. Uh, Neptune third house, they are, oh my God, my cat's going crazy. Um, they can just through, through, through like, um, they, they have this really amazing ability to communicate through different spiritual pursuits. Um, but also it can create like a scattered mind. And is there any Neptune? No, on that spot. So, you know, there, there's a need to kind of like um, understand that that, that 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 there's a potential there, but like, like by creating uh, outlets like writing, you know, it's it's amazing. And then Uranus, finally, um, you know, in the third, that creates someone that's like genius energy. Uranus is um, an aspect that also. So, um, yeah, just, just like, uh, like someone, just a quick thinker with original ideas, like, like you can get like downloads through your right. Like if you're like a writer, you can like, get, you can get downloads. If you do like a daily journal, like a dream journal, like, like things just come to you even, or even just when you talk. So really like learning to slow down for the Gemini moon is so important. Learning to ground yourself, uh, in that Taurus, Taurus Mars energy, right? Um, can be very, very, very like good and 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 lead to lots of like downloads coming to you. Um, and also, yeah, it can bring like a unusual relationship with siblings. Neptune can bring like a very spiritual relationship or a, com a confusing relationship, <laughs> a abnormal one. So yeah. Um, and I talked about Blackman Lilith, you know, uh, in the second and in, in um. In, in sad you know also like like another thing is like just throwing yourself into too many ventures at once right um superman syndrome and uh dogmatism right um being reckless in your pursuit your pursuit of your goals um it's like uh a team of horses you know you have your carriage and like they're galloping out of control you know like having a ferrari not being able to like like uh control it so it's like Okay, let's just focus on uh, let's go the, the horse analogy. Instead of having eight, like twenty horses, let's just have two that we know really, really well, right? Um. So also it can it can create some money problems. Even though I said that that wasn't a big thing, but like you know having Mars in um in Taurus could be very good for money, and your Moon is in Gemini. Oh, okay. So we need we need to see like we we really I I've been just dying to open up the the um the fixed stars but uh, i have just a few more things to talk about um but yeah it's really important to uh not be uh, obsessed with uh the physical to really ground yourself in the metaphysical and then that puts away a lot of those energies but there can be an obsession about that with you know making as much money as possible in the side of the third um so juno which speaks about like kind of your optimal marriage mate takes things way deeper is conjunct Pluto in Scorpio, like myself. So in the first house. So wanting someone who um you know doesn't put up with like who, who no who's just not a pushover, also not like a covert narcissist or anything like that, but someone who's who's independent, um, you know, who gives you your space to, to really create and to really and don't worry, I did not read your your love need. I did not even look at it. So I wonder how should I? No, I'm not gonna look at it. I'll see if, if 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 I'm close. Um, but yeah, basically, like you know, they they have to like understand that Scorpio part of you. Um, 
and the fact that you know you you are someone who is multi, very multifaceted. So they have they have to be fun. They have to be very there. Has, there needs to be a very high intellectual connection, like almost like they're your best friend. Um. Then there's this need for sensuality as well, like um. And someone who's who's very you know who's very patient. So it's like a mix of like fun, interesting, intellectual, and patient. Um. But yeah, Mars in the seventh house sometimes it's people who just like, rel- just have this strong drive for relationship after relationship. They they just like put a lot of energy into finding relationships. But Tri and Saturn makes it so they can last. So yeah. Um, and yeah, Juno and Scorpio just like uh really really wanting someone who um, you know, wanting like very intense, almost challenging, sexual and very very sexual relationships as well. Um, and a lot of people talk about it like you know wanting your partner's total attention which I think you you kind of have to balance that out with the rest of the chart because I don't ha- I have the same placement I don't, I don't have that at all in fact it's the opposite I want my a partner who has their own life and their own shit going on and you know um, but what, what I would take from June Scorpio from my own experience and and in, in, in your chart being, you know, similar to mine in, 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 in lots of respects is um, just the idea that um, loyalty, just this need for, for deep loyalty, something where you don't have to like even even like debate whether they're cheating or not. Right. And. Um, yeah, just like the, the first house, someone who, who helps you in that process of individualization um, and of that whole ego versus like, like soul energy. So yeah, probably like a spiritual person, um, you know, someone who can, who can uh, like, like a very supportive relationship that, that allows you freedom and space to like really fully um, show the, the high vibe Leo high vibe, vibe Gemini and so forth. Uh, and definitely someone, they don't have to be into everything you're into, but they cannot, be someone who just like bashes if you're really into like you know spiritual growth and esoteric they can't be someone who just like bashes that so yeah um let's see here okay let's open the star map should we I think I talked about most things, right? I guess Palace, what else can I say about that? Um, yeah, just seeing the, seeing the big picture. And yeah, the Palace and the Cancer, I already said it's very intuitive. It's like the third eye, Palace. Um, and really, really, uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, another thing. Like really like learning to rely on your your, your body, your emotions, your intuitions to guide, to guide you um, in life. And it also makes you a very empathetic listener and because it's conjunct uh Chiron, you know, it can make you a very, very good healer. Um and someone who's also like uh keen on you know keeping up communications with, with the family and, and healing any pain there, like karmic pain. Okay, I think I talked so part of fortune also in Virgo, eleventh house, you're your best you're in your you're in your bag, in your zone when you are um you know with other people um who you know kind of uh have a similar purpose to you and when you're really giving back to humanity um through whatever you're doing um and in virgo yeah it's like you know your greatest happiness comes when you're when you have reached like a level of of, of yeah of service you know of, of and also uh organization in your life um but yeah, for you, like service equals joy. Like you really are probably someone who loves uh, helping and, and, and contributing to, 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 you know, bettering society and helping individuals. Okay, let's open this up. Actually, let me see one thing. Oh, yeah, one thing about series in the 10th house is, is that a lot of people who have that, they, they might choose like a um, a caring profession. 
um, something that, that involves like warmth and Leo. Um, yeah, I already talked about that. Like, like, like really feeling nurtured when, when, uh, you're praised and be also being someone or, you know, praised for your, for your creativity, but also being someone who is able to really praise others for their creativity. And, um, you know, it also gives you like this great creative, this great need to kind of, you know, uh, have more of that in your life like a high creative purpose so okay let's open the stargate let's see if we find anything okay oh and I forgot to talk about Mars opposite Pluto before I get, get into that it's a huge one um, so Mars opposite Pluto, massive, um, that is one of the most volcanic, um, aspects in all of astrology. And basically it creates this volcanic yeah, energy within you that has to be expressed. Usually physically, you need, you need to work out basically. You need, you need to sweat. You need to have something in your routine. That's why the Virgo energy was highlighted there. Um, you know, physical or creative outlet, I would say physical, I'd say both like for sure. Physical. Uh, creative would be great too um but a lot of times it's people who have to like um they, they can really attract like very intense fucking like it, it can also yeah be like abuse it can it can, it can be very related to, to attract like um to abuse like really someone who has to battle against all odds for themselves um so yeah it's really difficult when young so lots of, like there's like this this is you know um related to abuse potentially things victimization um and it can lead to someone being very hard on themselves um very very competitive though right um very high expectation especially like like so usually people have this like they when they're young um played sports um yeah there, there could have been like some abuse from like a parent or teacher or, you know usually it's a man if it's if it's mars like uh, it's not necessarily a parent, like someone, and um, it can continue into adulthood, you know, um, until it's 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 uh, you know, until the the, the energy is because uh, it's this frustration, it's, it's this really volcanic energy, and with the the sun square Mars, you can just lash out. So um, yeah, conflict with superiors, no, another thing. Um, very, but yeah, it, it just kind of like like it's a very independent person you know once you think things their own way um and it can make someone like so there's this real need for the neutral mind i just made a video about that it's uh my last live watch that um just about not creating karma with other people super important and having that space between triggering statement by someone let's say christmas so i'm happy you're getting screen now uh Let's say like, you know, person A, person B, person A says something to you. It's a perfect trigger, you know, like, hey, hey, Grant, why are you studying your uh, stupid like witchcraft or something? I don't know, whatever, whatever. Um, and or, you know, whatever, whatever it is. But it's about not reacting um, and having the, that kind of like pause button where there's like space, space between statement reaction and really having that and, and seeing the big picture that's huge um but yeah there, this is another one where there's this am amazing ability to transmute and transform the energy and when you have mars and pluto working together as a team there's nothing more powerful uh for leadership for determination single-mindedness right which helps against the gemini moon scatteredness potential ten, you know potential um but yeah it's really about uh and, and yeah this can more about this it can be very yeah very very defensive really intense very courageous also um but yeah it can make someone misunderstood and someone who like attracts like very like psychological intense uh battles you know whether it's 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 meant it's it's like arguments or fights you know and because it's in the seventh house like enemies right can, can come from this right 
So, you know, it's all about finding what is true power because what, 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 like, you know, there can be like a need to, to, to be, to be right and, and to be in control of things. It's in the relationship house. So it's like, um, you know, letting go of that need to, 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 to be in control. Um, it's also very, you know, gives off a very uh, alluring kind of sexual magnetism. And that, that's it's Scorpio rising also. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, the key is just through that, that, that relentless Pluto determination um, and the deep investigation of like where, what your true des desires are, where they come from, um, the, just the awareness, you know? And, and 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 really like taking responsibility for for your part in different things, and um, it's all it's not you know it, it can come through books through through you know through 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 readings through this and that but it's really really like very very trial and error. So anything that, that you've done in the past that you might feel shame for, you know, don't feel shame. You know, start 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 anew, right? Um. Yeah, it's really like a on the job training until you just master that in, in, in just, that, just that intense energy. Um, so yeah, it takes time. Um, so yeah, besides that, yeah, just the, the the whole like 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 people who have who who don't integrate this well, they can just try to control their partners so much, they can control other people, they, and they'll be stubborn and they, they, they like, they can like have completely lost like an argument, but they're smart and they'll just never give up. So it's just about just like, you know, just, just being able to admit when you're wrong and taking accountability. Um, and understand that true power comes from within, um, being able to, to admit, you know, a, a strong, a strong spiritual moral code is in a sense of karmic responsibility. Those are two huge keywords. But so many fucking famous people have this one, especially in Taurus. So it's it's like this this feeling of like fighting to get ahead. Um, so it's like don't abuse that that power, and then it can be like amazing for being like a super strong leader. Okay, so now we can get to the, to where where I was getting to. Um, let's start at ascendant. Nothing there. La 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 la. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. La, 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 la. Nothing there. No. 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 Nope, nope, nope. Wow. Let's see if I have my first. Nope, of course. Um, arrows conjunct moon, very, very uh, dynamic, passionate, sexual energy. It's arrows, erotic, but it's not just about that, right? Um, but yeah, just like uh, there's this real burning quality to the energy of arrows right and uh it can be it can run out of control so it, it goes without saying with what i was saying it's very volcanic um so just like really really need, needing to watch impulses which is a key of, uh which is a theme now also you're gonna have one of the wealth stars i know it is that beelges yep dollar tricks um Yeah, so you have some some well stars um on your moon. So um that's nice. Pretty straightforward. Um, you know, Gemini in tropical is, is is home to a lot of the well stars, and um, yeah, like like Moon conjunct Bellatrix is about luxury, lust, vain ambition. I'm reading here, by the way, waste, ruin. And a lot of these are very old, like <laughs> yeah, explanations. Great power, honor. Um, and wealth, honor and marsh, um, uh, martial matters. I always take that as just like being like 
like winning winning like just strong leadership potential but also like being able to just fuck people up <laughs> um a good athlete uh surgeon potential uh you know men, uh metal worker maintain distinction through courage so you see how good that one is um moving on there's so many kids I can't see. And maybe if I do I know what I can do. I can open it like that and then I can see Okay, here we are. Ten, nine. Oh, I see. Okay, so it's actually not. All right. Was your, was your, was your Jupiter tw was twenty? Oh no, it was twenty nine, wasn't it? Yeah, twenty nine degree Jupiter also in Cancer. Uh, I didn't really talk about that. Just like, um, how this life is like very, very like kind of like a, a coming to terms, kind of like karmic ending in relation to uh, you know, the energy of Jupiter in Cancer. Um. So lots of, of family karma trying to kind of close the door on that and and higher learning and, and different perspective. Um so yeah, I mean it's it's a high a high energy for sure. And uh it can make someone very, very uh philosophically, philosophically advanced is, is how I see it. Um but also like a big, big, big um karma related to, to really learning and to, to really finding truth. So, I need to look at something really quick. I can't fucking see what this one is. Either way. Here I can see. Okay, so you have Amor, which is a beautiful asteroid on your midheaven. Um, that is about like un it's like unconditional love, and um, to have it on your midheaven is 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 just beautiful in itself. Um, and it just shows that you have like that you you embody like when people see you like on social media, um, you know, without really knowing you, like like let's say you, you were doing something like I was doing, you you would embody you embody this this. This uh, energy of unconditional love, and that also is shown by Selena, White Moon Selena, which is like the opposite of Black Moon Lilith, right? Being on your Jupiter, so it's very, very goddess energy. Now I need to check something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one sec. One sec, one sec.
one sec. Okay, so Mercury already talked about like you know the Denebola energy. Um, it's not like smack on, but like yeah, it's close enough to where it, it definitely makes a difference. Um, but I, oh yeah, I remember I was I was gonna look, I was gonna find uh, in Haley's explanation of this of White Moon. Okay. Uh, here it is. Is this here? It is okay, yeah. So it's the exalted expression of our soul, choose our highest self, our light, and the best part of our soul. White moon slain is a point of protection of virtue and where your light is felt by others. Having a strong white moon slain is an intricate point. To being highly protected, being seen as, as a light in the world, and may lead you to higher. Leadership where you inevitably lead others towards their own light so they may shine uh, this light into this world. Um, so, yeah, um, having it. Yeah, it just, it's, it's just all about protection. I don't really all respect to her. She's one of my good friends, but. I don't really um, think that the sign of asteroids matters unless it's, you know, I mean, these ones, unless it's in jump, but it's in, it's, in, it's, in, it's in cancer. So either way, it's like, you know, it's intuitive protection. Um, and also, definitely don't, like, if you are someone that has, like, lots of money, lots of resources, don't flash that shit. I know it's an obvious thing, but, pe like, there can be, like, lots of dark energy on you if you do. So, yeah. Um, man, thinking more on the midheaven is beautiful. Um, I don't even know, like, like, 
asteroids conjunct south node, but so I'm undecided whether I believe that has any any meaning or, or not. But if it does, I just want to say that you have Urania, which is the astrologer uh, asteroid, on your south node. So, like, I'm to me, I'm like usually asteroids. To me, it's only if if they're like right next to like within one or two degrees tops, two and a half degrees or three degrees tops of like a planet or a point. But south node, it's not a point, but it's exact degree, so yeah. I mean, but no, wait, hold up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so um, maybe you're an astrologer in a past life. Anyways, this has been beautiful. Um, hope you enjoy. So for the follow up, let me know. Um, we just kind of like run through this one more time. So there'll be two videos. Unless I can find a way to attach it, but I'm super bad with technology. Shoot. Um, yeah, so remember, um, you're doing things for the collective, you're still here to really be powerful in your career, but, um, yeah, just, just not going overboard, basically, and, and really make sure, making sure you focus on your mental health, and, um, you have a very solid routine, and that you keep diving deeper and deeper and deeper. All right, thank you. Ciao.